Hello sweetie. Welcome to the Zero Calvin channel. Please, have a seat and make yourself comfortable. The show will begin directly. Bye bye for now love. Big things are happening for Mark Scottsdale. He has just graduated from college and is looking forward to starting a new life with his childhood friend and longtime girlfriend, Lisa. So when an old classmate of his offers him a high paying job working for a new research facility, Mark jumps at the opportunity. However, all of his dreams come to an abrupt end when Lisa is taken from him by a drunk driver. Distraught and devoid of a reason to live, Mark contemplates suicide. However, before following through on his dark thoughts, Mark has an epiphany. If he could gain access to the company's secret Flickr World project, he might just be able to see his beloved Lisa again after all. Welcome to this special Valentine's edition of Zero Calvin. I'm doing this for all my poor brothers out there that got caught rendering naked 3D girls by their real girlfriends and are now in the doghouse today. By the way, thanks for putting up with the advertisement for my book, Flickr World. I'm anticipating this video being demonetized, so I wanted to get something out of it. I do think Flickr World is a fantastic book though, so I urge you to check out the link in the description to my books on Amazon and pick it up. Now let's start this video with some facts. Firstly, real life women have breasts. Those breasts have mass. Things with mass have inertia, which is the tendency for an object at rest to stay at rest and an object in motion to stay in motion. Since breasts are loosely coupled to the body with muscle and soft tissue, they tend to move independently of the body at times. This is why women wear bras. 3D women have breasts too. Since they are usually modeled by guys, they tend to have big ones. Those big breasts should have a lot of mass and inertia and therefore should also have movements that lag behind the movements of the body. Unfortunately, by default, your eye clone character has rock hard breasts with no movement at all. So how do we fix this travesty? For those of you who are in a hurry, I'll show you the quick answer now. However, for those wanting to be true breast physics gurus, stay tuned and I'll teach you all the forbidden knowledge that I know. So how iClone handles uh, breast physics is with springs. So in order to activate these springs, uh, it's actually pretty easy. You're gonna choose your character, go to the modify tab and the attribute sub tab here. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see a section called spring. Notice that under select spring you'll see three different springs listed. For CC3 plus characters like Trisha here we are only concerned with this first one and this one will control the physics for both breasts. If, however, you have an older generation character, like this one, uh, you'll notice that there are only the, those two springs. And uh, you're gonna use each of these and they'll control each breast independently. So you'll have to set your parameters for each one. For the simplicity's sake, 
We're just going to concentrate on the CC3 Plus characters, though, since they're the latest generation. So turning on the breast physics in iClone is as simple as choosing the character, selecting this first spring, and clicking on Activate. Now, you'll want to be careful here because um, anything in green in iClone is something that can be keyframed. Meaning, if I were to scroll through here a little bit in the timeline and click on Activate here on frame 690, if I go before there, you'll see it's off, and anything after, it's on. So this might come in handy because you might want to turn the physics on and off, you know, at some point in your uh, animation. But uh, most of the time you're going to want to keep it on and you're going to want it on on the first frame. So I'm going to press Control Z to undo what I did. So now that it's off all the time, I'm going to go to my very first frame and I'm going to activate it. Okay, so now it'll be activated our whole way through. So when I press play here, her breasts will drop a little bit due to gravity, and you'll see a little bit of movement out of them. So you may notice that there is movement, but there isn't a lot of movement. Um, you can see this clearer if I go to my specially made breast cam. So this camera is actually locked on to the character so that it will remain stationary with respect to the character. We can get a closer look at what's going on. So you'll see there is definitely movement here and you can see it's being effect they're being affected by gravity. But as she gets uh, later on into her routine where it gets more active, just a minute here, when she's bouncing up and down. Okay, so you'll see them going up and down, but there's like a hard limit in place, right? There isn't a lot of movement. You see, they, they go and then they just can't go any further, they stop. So if you've ever run into that, um, you know, with smaller breasts, I'm sure it looks more natural, but with bigger ones, that could be a problem. So there's a fairly easy way around it, and I'm going to show you more in depth later on how this actually works. But the short answer is there actually is a hard limit wired into the, these springs. And we can load in different spring parameters that uh, allows for a greater range of motion. So the sneaky way of doing that here, you'll notice right up here is there is open and save. And this is actually will open and save the spring parameters. And the interesting thing is it's loading in other parameters other than these three behind the scenes. So if we click on open, um, iClone or Realusion or whatever actually gives us a choice of uh, two different spring types. So the normal one is what we just saw, but there actually is one called heavier, which is kind of made for bigger breasts, I believe. And it allows for you know a little more movement. So if this doesn't come up in the right place, um, you'll have to find it. Uh, it's, I have it under my D drive, my stuff drive here is where I keep my uh, Realusion content. Um, yours, yours by default will be somewhere on your C drive, but you'll want to go to your Realusion folder, template, iClone temp 7 template, iClone template, spring profile, or just go on your C drive and click, you know, spring po profile on in the search uh, thing here, and you should hopefully find this folder. But anyway, if you go there and you load in the heavier one, now you'll notice these parameters are still all the same, six, six, and six, which is fine, a little bit demonic, but fine. But now we'll watch and we'll play with the breast cam on here. They drop a little bit further and there, you'll notice right off the bat there's like more movement going on, right? Even with when she's in the more mellow part of her routine, there's a lot more movement. 
And when she really starts bouncing up and down, you'll see that there's greater movement going, you know, up and down as well. There you go. See, there's a lot more, a lot more going on. It's a lot more noticeable. So for those of you who are interested in the quick answer, that's really it. All you have to do is go to the, click on your character, go to the first frame, activate it, the very first spring here, if it's a CC3 plus character. And if there's not enough movement for you, you can click here, load up the heavier spring settings, and you're set. For those of you who want a deeper dive into what these attributes do, and also uh, want to see what the hidden attributes are inside these spring files, then stick with me and we're going to go through that now. Now, to get a deeper understanding of how this is all working, I need to explain how 3D characters are constructed. Your 3D character at its heart is just a 3D mesh like this. It's a series of points and lines that are connecting them together. Okay. Um, when you do something like subdivide the character, the computer is then adding more mesh detail in between the other ones, just interpolating to make the silhouette of your character a little more smooth. So what it then does is it interpolates a smooth image over top of that mesh, which looks something like this. So you'll notice it's smooth. You know, you won't see the, the, the sharp edges of the wireframe or anything like that, but it's lacking in detail. All that detail comes from the texture maps that are layered on top of this surface. So specifically, you have like a bump map, which adds like fine detail to the texture and things like base color and stuff like that. So when we turn those on, we then get the full character. But the important thing to know here is at its heart, your character is nothing but this wireframe mesh. Now, in order to animate this character, we need a rig or a skeleton or an armature. They're all considered to be the same thing, I believe. So if I go to pose this character, and we click on bone edit mode, you'll actually be able to see the skeleton for this character. You'll notice that the bones have a thick side and a thin side. This is called the head and the tail. And the head of one connects to the tail of the other. And they're parented this way so that this bone is the parent of this bone, is the parent of these bones. And all that means is when you move, say, an arm, all these other ones follow along with it because they're attached. So when you go to animate this, if I were to rotate a bone, it's going to rotate from the head. You'll notice parts of the mesh are moving along with that bone. So this is accomplished with something called weight mapping. And I'll show you an example of it in a minute. But what that does is it allows this bone to control just certain sections of the mesh. So every time I move this bone, that this arm portion is moving. Now the interesting thing here is you'll notice that while some of this is moving 100% with the bone, you have sections like the elbow here that you know, have to crease up. And this is done with the weight map because while this whole arm may be at 100%, some of this portion of this uh, upper arm may only be like a small percentage, but there is a little bit of influence because you'll notice that things are happening to the upper arm when I'm moving this bone. So each of these bones is, you know, responsible for moving sections of 
the mesh around. So if I rotate this one, it's going to rotate the leg. I have the foot locked. It's going to rotate the leg. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward, I think. So the weird thing comes when we go to the breasts, because in order to move the breasts, it actually has to have bones. So in 3D, uh, characters actually have breast bones, which is kind of weird. But yeah, you'll see that they come off of the spine here and they go out into the breasts. Now with, um, usually you'll see the, them go more towards, you know, they'll terminate more about right towards the, the nipple of the breast. Um, because we made this character, I made this character with bigger breasts, um, you know, the bones don't quite follow that. Now, it is possible to alter those bones, um, but I found out f with testing that it actually makes absolutely no difference, believe it or not, um, whether or not I readjust the bones in the proper position. Strangely enough, doesn't seem to matter. So we won't worry about it. So the other funny thing is, you'll notice that, um, you know, unlike all these other bones, I can click on them, you know, and, and change them directly. But unfortunately for the, the breast bones, I can't adjust them directly. Um, character creator has them restricted. And that's because they've been converted to spring actuated bones. And that is what allows us to do the movement. So we can't animate them directly, but we can adjust those spring properties. But essentially how it's gonna work is, instead of this being a solid bone, it's thinking of it as a, a coiled up spring, a loosely coiled spring, similar to this one here, with a weight on the end. So if you picture a heavy weight like this bolt here on the end, and when I move the base of the spring around, you'll see there's movement at the end of the spring, right? And just like this coiled spring here, you'll note that I can push it and pull it in as well. And that same thing is going to happen uh, to our breast springs here in that they can actually grow and shrink as well as, you know, translate around. So it, it's almost just like this is a floating point in space loosely connected here. And whenever you know, this spine segment moves around, this is going to loosely follow behind as if it's attached by, you know, a spring like this. So that's the theory behind it. Incidentally, if you did feel that you wanted to adjust those bones, it is as simple as, um, you know, in character creator, um, going to the attribute tab here and just click on adjust bones. And this will let you move them around. So you could, you know, select these and, you know, move them by yourself. I guess you'd want to do both of these. But really the, the best way of doing it is just to click on auto position. And that'll actually fix all of the bones in your character and position them to where it thinks it's the, you know, the best possible place. So this is what it looks like afterwards. And then you just click on adjust bones again to get out of that. And now they're in their correct position. But like I said, it doesn't actually seem to matter, but if it makes you feel better, you could do it. If you ever do any really weird morphs to your character, you can always do that uh, trick as well. Let me just show you a quick example of the weight painting thing. Now to my knowledge, I don't believe there's any way of changing the weight painting uh, for the actual mesh of a, you know, standard character creator character. Um, but you can see the same effect on the clothing because that's how the clothing works. So the clothing is weight painted to the bones in the same way that the skin is. Um, so when you're doing the, you know, when you're creating clothing that needs to conform to the character, that's what the transfer skin weights thing is actually doing. It's transferring the skin weights from your character to the clothing so that they move the same as the character and kind of conform to it.
So uh, what we can do is click on the top here and we can look at the skin weights and we can actually play with them. So if I were to click on a bone like, like the right rib bone here, which is actually the breast bone, then you'll see that that breast bone, you'll see how it kind of weight maps um, to the breast section. And, you know, redder, like it goes from red is the, is it would be 100% to yellow to green to blues, you know, uh, goes something like that, I believe. Um, I could sit here and paint more and more. Add more and more. And eventually, I think it goes from red to white, and white is 100%. So black is not, nothing, and white is 100%. So that's kind of how uh, the weight painting works. If we put a long sleeve shirt on her, we can see the same effect um, with, say, the lower arm that we uh, were playing with before. So you see if we look at that forearm bone, you can see how it's heaviest at the top of it here, and it kind of feathers off into the other sections of the mesh. And that allows it to bend, you know, gracefully instead of having like a hard crease. Now let's look at Trisha inside 3D Exchange. You won't need 3D Exchange for this process. Um, it's simply so I can show you how the springs are set up. So with Trisha selected, I'm going to go to Edit Spring. Now remember in iClone, when we looked at the spring list, we had three spring things selected. We had a CC base spine, an RLG6 left ribs twist, and left and right, right? So the funny thing is, none of these are actually bones. Like if you look for a CC base spine 02, if I go to 3D Exchange, it doesn't exist. Um, there is a CC base, the rib twist, but actually even that's not the same name because if you actually remember, the name is RLG6L rib twist, not CC something or other rib twist. So how does that work? Because it, it, it doesn't seem to match up. The answer is these, um, the answer is these are actually spring groups, not actually springs. So if we look in 3D Exchange and I click on spring group list and we select Trisha, we'll see the spring group lists and everything makes a lot more sense then. So now we see the group names of the CC base Spino 2 thing which is the one we mainly are concerned with. And then these RLG6 ones, which again are for the older generation characters. And if we look, those actually have the actual bones underneath them. So we'll see CC base R, rib, blah, blah, blah. And that actually exists over here. And if we look at these CC base L and R, breast bones, they exist as children underneath those other two bones here and here. It's kind of weird the way it's set up. I'm not exactly sure why. You would have to ask the Realusion developers. So the reason I'm showing you this is because when we go to edit our spring file in iClone, uh, the entries are listed by bone here and not necessarily by spring group. Um, so this is just to clarify that situation for you. With that in mind, let's look at one of these spring files and see what's inside of it. So I'm going to go back over to iClone, and instead of you know searching for that directory, I'm just going to click on Open here, and then I'm going to right-click on one of these spring files. Now I already have these associated with Notepad, 
because um, they're just text files. There's nothing special about them. So if you want to do that, you can right click on it and you can say open with, and if you don't see notepad listed here, you can say choose another app. You may have to click on more apps and scroll around and find notepad. So you'll select notepad, click on always open SPX files with notepad, click OK, and that'll associate that with uh, notepad. So then from now on, you could be, you can just right click on it and say open, and it'll pop open here with notepad, which is pretty cool. So before I accidentally, you know, save over this, um, I'm going to save it as something different. Um, you'll notice you don't see the other files here, and that's because it's it's going to try to put txt after it. What you want to do is save as type. You want to switch it back over to all file types, and that'll leave it as a .spx, which is what you want. So I'm just going to rename this breast spring heavier test. Click OK. So now it's saved as that. And you'll notice it pops up here. I'm going to click on it and actually load that in now since we're still on the open thing. So now you'll notice anytime I want, I can click on here and this new one is available for us. So before we actually look inside that file though, I just want to draw your attention to the fact that there's already three parameters that we can mess with without digging into that file, and that's mass, strength, and bounciness. So mass is the mass of that, the center mass of the, the breast, basically. So the heavier the mass, the more inertia, the more it's going to not want to move with the body, and, and once it's moving, it's not going to want to like change directions, so it's going to really lag. Um, you may be tempted to just crank this up because thinking that, you know, bigger breasts are heavier, but that really doesn't, as we'll see later, that really doesn't look quite right sometimes. Um, but yeah, so that's the mass. So that's the equivalent to this, you know, the bolt on the end of the spring. Strength correlates to the strength of the spring. So the stronger this spring is, the stiffer it is, the, you know, more it's going to be able to whip around that mass. Um, if it was had absolute strength, it would just be a solid, and we'd be back to where we were at before. If it's really, really weak, then like you know, the boobs are going to be like whipping around all over the place, right? So that's the strength, and then we have something that is labeled bounciness, which is kind of a little odd. So what bounciness really is is it's the inverse of dampening. So dampening would be, think of like shock absorbers in a car. If you didn't have shock absorbers in a car, you'd hit a bump and you would keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing for a long time. There's nothing to kind of arrest that spring motion. So dampening you can think of as resistance. Um, so say you had, you know, this the spring in air versus the spring underwater. If you had underwater, there's going to be a lot more resistance. It's not going to sit there and spring back and forth as quickly because it has the resistance of the water. So it may bounce back and forth like twice and then return to center. Whereas if you did in the air, it could flick back and forth like five or six times. So that's the idea. So bounciness is the, the lower the bounciness, the more dampening there is and uh, the breasts will kind of like return to center quicker. If there's a lot of bounciness, there's hardly no dampening. And, you know, if you just did one movement, these things could like jiggle for a lot. So think of bounciness as that, that jiggle, I guess you could say, where they'll just keep moving long after the character has stopped. So now let's actually look at this file. So it looks a little ugly. Um, it's sort of in columns here. Uh, it's not tab delineated though. There's just a bunch of random spaces between these things. And I don't necessarily think it matters how many spaces are between anything. It just looks um, that there are spaces and then it reads the parameters in a row like that. So now when we look at the columns, 
Uh, the main ones we're concerned with are gravity, max length, K. K is actually bone strength, which is actually spring strength. Damping, mass. Um, we don't have to worry about any of these other things um, because they're really irrelevant. Uh, you will note here, though, that we have our rib twist and then a breast, and a rib twist and a breast. And you'll see that they belong to different groups. You see that there's, you see that these two belong to the same group, the CC base spine O2 group, which looks familiar, right? So in a CC3 plus character like we're using, you just want the to mess with the two bones that belong to this group. So it's going to be this row and this row, the first and third rows. The second and fourth row actually correspond to these guys here, which you'll note are the, these two groups, which correspond to these bones. Um, so if, you're, if you have a CC3 plus character like we do, you're going to work on these two. If you have an older character, you're playing with these two, the second and the fourth at least as far as I know. I've never actually played with this um, file with the older generation characters, so I could be dead wrong about that. But, you know, just logically, it looks like they're corresponding to the, those things. But anyway, for us, for now, we're only concerned with the first and third rows here. So the interesting thing here is there's one, two, three, four, five parameters here that we can play with. There's only three parameters here. These three parameters actually do correlate to three of the parameters in here. So K is the bone strength, which actually correlates to this strength here. Damping correlates to the bounciness, but it's actually kind of the inverse. So a higher dampening is like a lower bounciness. And mass corresponds to the mass here. Through some testing, I've figured out that these are like multipliers to this. So if I were to say change the mass here from 5,000 to 10,000, so double the mass, but then here in this slider, I switched it from six to three, so I halved it. The end result would be identical. So these, these are like multipliers. So the wind up of it is, you know, most of the time you probably won't have to worry about messing with um, K damping or mass here inside the file. The two ones that interest us are max length and gravity. So let's play with these and see what happens. So max length, it turns out, is that hard stop we were talking about. So if I open up the normal spring file and we compare this normal spring file with the heavy spring file, you'll notice that the max length goes from 1.8 to 3 and that is allowing that extra movement that we're seeing. Um, you'll notice also that there are um, other small changes to like the uh, K value, which again is the stiffness of that spring. So they're making the so they're making the springs a little bit heavier. So they go from 2,000 to 2,500. So they're making the springs heavier, and they're also upping the dampening. So essentially, what this file is doing is making the breast slightly stiffer, slightly less jiggly but with more movement. The interesting thing about it is since they're changing the numbers here directly in the file, um, even though we have these parameters over here, you know, strength and bounciness stay at six and six, it's affecting strength, the strength and the bounciness because it's, again, these are just multipliers of that file. So when we change the file, we're changing those parameters underneath the hood. So let's see what effect these things have. I'm going to my test file here 
And let's just change max length to like 0.5 and save the file. And then go over here and load up that file. Um, before I get into this, let's actually remove her top so we can see what's going on a little bit better. So I remove her top and uh, you perverts thought you were going to see naked breasts, but nope. Um, in order to hopefully not demonetize this, I have the top like basically spray painted onto her skin. So this is um, this is actually her skin texture, but it's just I have the top colors painted on it, hopefully to fool the algorithms here for us. Um, so now if I press play, with that in mind, you see the breasts drop down a little bit. There isn't a lot of movement going on, right? Just a tiny bit. And if we say fast forward to the end here where she's really jumping around, there's just not much movement going on at all. So you can see that that really restricted it. Now, if we were to do something like switch these to 10, save the file, and then load it in. We press play, we see her breasts really drop down and there's a lot of movement going on because they're they're not that restricted at all. And if we fast forward to where she's jumping up and down, these things are just going crazy, right? So that is what the max movement <laughs> entails. It's, you know, how far this, the weight of the breast can move around, you know, before it uh, hits a hard stop, basically. Obviously 10 is probably too much. <laughs> For now though, I'm gonna leave those set to 10 just to exaggerate this example to, to show you the other parameter we can change inside the file. So you'll note that when I press play, the, you know, those boobs drop down due to gravity. And there may be situations, and if she were laying on her back, they would actually like really flatten down too. And if she were to be bending over, they would really stretch out in this direction. Um, you might not want that sometimes. You may want to be able to turn that down. Um, you know, especially if she's wearing a bra of some sort, then the effect of gravity is going to be less on these, and you might not want to have the like dragging down to her knees. So in comes the other parameter. So, you know, watch now, see they drop, right? In comes the other parameter we can change, which is gravity. So gravity of one is a gravity of, you know, normal gravity. If we set it to zero and save, and go over here and load the file again, and we press play, you notice they do not drop down due to gravity now. So the only thing that's making a move is just the inertia of the body. So let's go to the main cam and you'll see that they're, they're not sagging, but they're just jiggling around with her normal movements. And they look really strange because they're not stiff enough you know, to keep up with the body, you know? So I think that's why in the heavier breath section that there, there was more, um, you know, basically less bounciness and more strength in the spring is to keep those puppies under wraps. So with that said, that's all we really need to know about the parameters inside this file. But I do find that it's really nice that they give you, you know, an explanation of, you know, these columns here down below, which is nice. You may notice some weird things. Um, you'll notice that there is a spring type. So there's a zero one, which is a rotate and a translate. And we're doing a translate spring. And that just has to do with the type of spring it is. So you can think of the rotate spring as something like this putty knife where it can rotate, but the actual spring length cannot grow. Um, so that would mean like, say our breasts could, you know, move up and down, left and right, but they couldn't go in and out. So if she laid down, they wouldn't flatten out. Um, 
I've played around with this and I didn't really have a lot of success changing it to a rotate spring, um, but I didn't really spend a lot of time on it. So I would suggest for the most part, I just leave it as type zero here as, ro as a translate spring. And you'll note that for the ma max length, max length um, is not used with the rotate spring. It's only used for the translate spring, which kind of makes sense because it's, it's the max length that thing can travel away from, you know, where it's supposed to be at any given time. Um, whereas we have another thing called max angle, which only applies to, you know, uh, the rotate and doesn't apply to the translate. And that just makes sense that, you know, it's the maximum angle at which that spring can rotate. And again, I would just ignore that. So max angle, you're not gonna have to worry about. So really the two things you'll wanna play with here inside this file, for the most part, is gonna be gravity and max length. Now with that said, let's see what these three multiplier sliders do. Now for the sake of clarity, I'm going to leave uh, these springs set where um, with no gravity and with a big max length to really allow us to um, see any of the exaggerated results that might happen. So what I plan to do is turn each of these down to a, a low value and a high value and we can see the results. And in order for us to compare more readily, I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side between the main cam here and the locked-in breast cam. So you'll see both at the same time. So with that in mind, let's watch our baseline first with everything set to uh, the default of six. Okay, now let's turn the mass down on these really low. So let's do like, all the way down is like 0.01. Let's just do, let's do like a 0.2. So almost no mass to these. Let's see what happens. As you play with these, you'll realize that these are all interrelated to, you know, things like the mass. We can have a heavier mass, but we may need a stronger spring to then counterbalance it. But they may, then may wobble more, so we may need to decrease the, bou the bounciness. You'll have to play with them, um, you know, in combination with each other to really get the, the thing you're looking for. And you'll also probably find that you'll need different parameters in different situations. You may, um, you know, because you'll note that this probably looked pretty good in the beginning where she wasn't moving around much, but when she really started to jump around, you know, they became stupid looking. So it's really going to be up to you to decide on what combination is best for you. But let's continue to look at the extremes here. So let's set the mass all the way up to six now, or 11, which is as high as it goes. If you can see, yeah. the numbers all go to 11. Look, right across the board, oh. 11, oh, 11, and most of 11, the and then amps go up to 10. Exactly. And press play.
Okay, cool. So let's reset this back to its factory default of six and play with the strength of the spring. So let's set the spring down all the way to, again, pretty low. We'll just do 0.2. I tend not to do the extreme low settings. A lot of times weird things happen. So let's just set it down to 0.2 and see what happens there. Yep, that was as ridiculous as I thought it was going to be. So now let's crank the strength all the way up to 11. Let's set the strength back to its default of six. And now let's turn bounciness all the way down. So bounciness only goes down to one. So let's press play on that. So bounciness down to one, remember, is going to be very dampened. So you'll note at the end there, there was almost no jiggle whatsoever, right? After she stopped, those things stopped. Let's go back and crank up the bounciness to 11. These go to 11. Now you see how at the end there, they kept bouncing and bouncing and bouncing, and that's what the bounciness does. Yep, it's like jiggle. Now let's pretend we're actually trying to dial these in for real. Um, now, if I were really doing this, I would probably wouldn't have, I, I definitely wouldn't have this max length set to 10. That's just way too much movement. But let's see if we can get them to look sort of okay, given our exaggerated movement we have. So if I were to tackle this, you know, it's obvious that the mass is going to be, have to be very low. So we're going to turn it down to something like 0.2 and we're probably going to have to up the strength a little bit too of the spring to maybe something like eight. And we'll leave the bounciness cranked up for now because I have a feeling that with the low mass and the high strength, we're not going to get hardly any bounciness whatsoever anyway. So we may have to leave that set all the way up. So let's press play and see what happens with that.
So in order to keep these things under control, you know, we had to turn the mass way down and the strength, you know, the spring up kind of, um, which made made for not much movement. Um, and, you know, with the stiff spring, you don't get much jiggle. So you notice at the end there wasn't hardly any jiggle whatsoever. So if we did want jiggle, we're going to have to like limit the movement of the, the max movement of these things. So it doesn't look as ridiculous. Um, so again, I think that's, you know, why it's normally set to 1.8. And even when we, um, you know, the jacked up heavy version was set to three. So maybe let's still be somewhat exaggerated, but we'll just change it to five here. We'll save this. We'll load it in. Go back to the beginning. And if we want some jiggle, we want, um, you know, basically more mass uh, or and or a lighter spring. But let's do a little more mass. So let's do 0.5. And let's set the strength back down to, say, 6 here. Press play and see what happens. So overall, I think that looks pretty good as far as, you know, exaggerated breast physics are concerned. It's probably not that realistic, but, you know, if you wanted to have something that's exaggerated but not look really weird, then that would probably be pretty good settings. You may have to sit there and tweak the mass and the strength a little bit, uh, depending on, you know, your whether you want to favor movement versus the uh, jiggle that you get at the end. But anyway, that's how this all kind of works together. You know, you have five different variables here that kind of interplay with each other. So this video is now running very long, and I think I've finally reached the end of my breast knowledge that I can share with you guys. So happy Valentine's Day, my dudes, and I, I hope you use this information for good and not evil. And, <laughs> um, you know, enjoy yourselves with it. And uh, But, you know, try to do it in private where your girlfriend doesn't catch you so that next Valentine's Day you won't be alone. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Cheers. This video brought to you by BrianKramerBooks.com. BrianKramerBooks.com for all your humorous science fiction needs.